video is not about putting on these aluminum bunks nor welding them. It's actually about prepping the valve cover after you've welded them. Check it out on the bottom. There is a baffle on the back side of your valve cover and you have to remove this thing. This one right here, I've actually drilled out the rivets and I've added in a bunch of screws and rebonded it just so that I could clean out the inside. Because the bungs, when you drill for these bungs, it gets stuff stuck inside the baffle. And those little tidbits could blow up your motor. So we're gonna be talking about how to recreate this guy. First thing we have to do is we have to remove these rivets. To get these things out, we need to drill them out. So I'm gonna use a center punch and I'm gonna try and find the center of this guy and then hit it with my center punch. Now, if you notice, this thing looks like it's pretty center. It might be move over this way just a little bit. And so to get it to move center just a little bit, I'll hit the punch again, and just kind of push the hole over just a tiny bit and try and find a better center. Now look at that guy, now it looks pretty center. So now I'm gonna take a 564 drill bit and I'm gonna drill this guy. And the key is just to go down a little bit and start a hole so that way we can go to bigger drills. Should be good enough right there. Take a look at that. Now we're gonna hit it with a 3 8 and we're just gonna try and get that rivet out without affecting the hole in the baffle plate. So now you have to do this on all of the rivets. You can see most of the rivet is gone and if you can't get it off, you can take a screwdriver and just hit it with a hammer and clean those sections off. And that's just breaking that rivet down so that way the baffle will release from the valve cover. So here's just a little bit left right here. Give it a little bit of a whack and just make sure that it's clean all the way around so there's no more rivet left. That's still the head of the rivet on there. The more you clean this off, it'll be easier to break the silicone that's underneath it. Looks like there's just a little bit right there. You could use a panel popper. You could also use a basic flathead screwdriver. I also use this guy a little bit. This is a tack puller actually. And you could use an awl. This, I made this little piece. It's kind of like an awl, but it's a modified piece. This used to be a flathead snap-on screwdriver and I kind of converted it into an awl. But those are the items that you can use. Now I've only taken off three of these guys. And you can see it coming up already. Here you can see the baffle. This is the steel part. This, within the hole here, is actually the aluminum of the valve cover. But if you notice, when I drilled out the rivet, that I wasn't centered with the hole that's in the baffle. So you have a divot in the aluminum here, and this center of this thing is not centered with the hole that's in the baffle. So what you have to do is you have to use a transfer punch and try and center the transfer punch in the hole that's in the baffle. So here I have it centered in the hole and baffle, but now I'm gonna rotate the transfer punch in a direction so that way it won't fall into the hole or into the divot that was in the aluminum. So I'm gonna position it like this just a little bit and then I'm gonna give it a whack. You can see the punch right here. Now this punch is in the middle of this hole, and that's the key. Now I'm gonna take my drill, and this one is a 330 seconds, and this is gonna start this hole, and that punch is right there, so now I'm going to position this, and then start the hole. It's not very important to dig deep into it, it's just to dig deep enough so that way you have a starting point for your next drill bit size. And now I'm gonna to move to a larger size drill bit. So this one is an eighth inch drill bit and notice I have tape on here for the depth that I wanna go. I'm going down 12 millimeters. Now 
now we're gonna go with a 532. Now here, it, we don't necessarily have to check depth because you'll feel it when it bottoms out. Notice the difference in the tap right here. It isn't very pointy. So this is meant for blind holes. And this is an M5 by 0.8. For it, try and bring it out nice and straight. And then don't take this thing too far while you'll end up breaking the tap. So you'll feel it hit the bottom, it'll tighten up pretty good. And then when you take it out, just make sure that you're careful when you take it out. And I like to try and support it so that way you don't mess up the threads. Again, these are aluminum threads and you just don't want to mess anything up. Millimeter. Then you're going to add in a five millimeter pan head bolt. Items. I'm just putting this thing in temporarily to hold the plate as I go around and doing each one. You can see I have some of them in. And then again, this is just temporary that I put this thing in here. Once I get all of them in, get it all cleaned up. And I'll clean the whole thing up, get it all cleaned up, and then I'll put the bond where it's supposed to go on this guy. And so you could either use the Honda bond. I'm gonna be using some So here's the setup. I have a beautifully cleaned valve cover right here. If you notice, all the different holes are tapped, and I sealed off the holes that I could not tap, which are these two right here in the middle, this one and this one. And check out all of my M5 screws right here. Those all have been prepped with Loctite Blue. Here is the Permatex Ultra Gray that I'm using. I have my Allen key all set up and just in case if I need my razor blade. And I also have my acetone, my cotton swabs all set up. And also, this guy, the baffle, has been totally cleaned as well. So I'm making sure that everything's clean. I'm not touching anything. I'm also wearing brand new gloves so that way we don't get anything dirty.